This video will discuss the steepest descent algorithm for energy minimization in computational chemistry. So we mentioned in the previous video that energy minimization is, or geometry optimization, is a procedure to generate a to generate the set of coordinates which has a minimum energy for some molecular system of interest for simulation. So steepest ascent is an example of a specific algorithm you can use for geometry optimization for energy minimization. So it's a method for obtaining local stationary points of a multi-dimensional function, which we will apply as the kind of simplest method for geometry optimization. So in principle, what we want to do here, if we imagine we have some potential energy V of X, ours is of course going to be in three N dimensions three coordinates per atom n atoms three n total coordinates so we have some function here and at each point we're going to compute what our gradient or i.e derivative of the energy is take some displacement of our system compute the new energy the new gradient displace again and keep going until our energy has reached a minimum and our gradient has gone to zero as has the amount by which we are displacing are the coordinates of our system. Okay, so we have a, this is what I would call the simplest method for geometry optimization, or one of the simplest. So first thing we have to do is guess some initial geometry. So in the previous video, I showed an example where we have a bunch of helium atoms, which start out at some type of initial configuration. So you might make some type of informed guess as to what that initial geometry might be, like you might draw the molecule using Avogadro or some type of uh, molecule simulator. You might get them, you might get a structure from the internet, or you might just uh, write one down on pen and paper. Either way, you need some type of stru starting structure, which is some reasonable approximation to the uh, geometry of the system. Then we're going to compute the energy of our system at, that at those coordinates and the gradient of the energy, energy and gradient. We're going to use that information to update our coordinates, which I've indicated here as x. So this x underline is just like a vector of all of our 3n molecular coordinates. So our new coordinates are going to be our old coordinates minus some value gamma times the gradient of our uh, the gradient of our energy so this gamma here is just some scalar value which is you know how far we're displacing in the direction of decreasing energy remember our gradient points towards the d direction of, of most increasing energy so this negative gradient is the quickest decreasing energy so this gamma is just how far we step in that direction. And there are various methods for doing that. Uh, one of the simplest would just be called what's called a line search in that you just keep going and as the energy goes down. And as soon as the energy starts going back up again, you stop. That would be one method. Or you go until you reach the lowest energy. Uh, you go until the, uh, the gradient is zero. Lots of possibilities and lots of more advanced methods for picking this, but we're not gonna worry about that too much. Then once we displace our coordinates, we check for convergence. So if our system is what we call converged, then we're done and our current coordinates are our final coordinates. And if not, we return to step two. We compute the new energy, the new gradient. We update the coordinates again, check for, check for convergence, repeat, repeat, repeat until we either reach our final converged coordinates or we reach the maximum number of iterations we're willing to do for this cycle. Okay, so what are our convergence checks? Number one, we're checking that the gradient, uh, uh, the magnitude of the gradient is approximately zero, so that it's zero within some specified threshold. We are also checking that the change in energy between two steps, so the energy minus the previous energy is approximately zero, that that is going to zero as well. We're also checking that we're not displacing the coordinates too far, that our displacement of the coordinates relative to the previous step is also approaching zero within a specified uh, threshold. Okay, so let's see here. So I have the program that I've been showing again from my GitHub computational chemistry repository. 
So go down to the Scripps Molecular Mechanics MM Lib directory and down to the Optimize module. That's what's running mostly under the hood in this opt.py script that I've been using here. And I have that implemented somewhere with this optimization class. Bunch of stuff in there. And the real key critical function here is this optimize function where basically I do this iteration where I check the convergence and that I'm not past the maximum number of uh, iterations for each step. Um, choose a step direction based off the gradient. I do what's called a line search, kind of finding the minimum energy along that gradient direction. Update the energy in the gradient, append that step to the trajectory of the optimization, update my convergence criteria, check them, and then print to all my output files. So that's what I was doing in the previous video when we got this trajectory here, which was uh, these 497 steps, which is usually quite a lot. Often, if you're doing some optimization in uh, some quantum mechanical method, usually 50 is a pretty standard default maximum. But I'm using a very crude method for this optimization, whereas those programs use very advanced methods. I'm just using a simple line search with steepest descent. Um, so there we saw each step, it's kind of taking its step, uh, stepping in the direction of the gradient, and eventually collapsing down into that uh, local minimum structure, which we need. Because uh, our steepest descent algorithm, if we keep going, is guaranteed to converge to a local minimum, but not necessarily to our global minimum.